Hi, and welcome to Power Platform Pro. Today we'll be looking at Power BI Report Builder, which is a bit different to the normal Power BI desktop app that you may have used. The advantage of Report Builder is you can uh, create reports that print out, that scroll across multiple pages, which is something you can't do in normal Power BI. Check the link to my previous video, which shows you how to automate looking through different filters in the Power BI Report Builder and uh, printing them off to concatenate into one single document. But for now, let's take a look. Power BI Report Builder for Paginated Reports. This is a paginated report as you can see on the screen. Um, it's got a couple of filters at the top. You can change um, the org unit, for example, or you can change the region, um, or you can change the pillar. View report. And it will change the colors of the table depending on the, the pillar that's selected and it will uh, create these tables and it will go to more pages if it needs more pages to tell you the time that the report was generated on. So this report is needed for LLS because um, the dashboard which we provided uh, it's scrollable you can't put all this information on one, on one sheet so there's no way to print this out. You could uh, export it to to uh, Excel and recreate it somehow, but that'd be very manual, so this is what the, the paginated report's for. Um, so to create this, you need to download the Power BI Report Builder, which looks like this. Um, and this video is going to show you how to build this basic report. So the first thing to do is to make sure in the view that you've turned everything on, so you're going to need the properties pane at the bottom. On the right, sorry. Um, so the first thing you do is you load a data source in um, and you can add it from Power BI. Um, so just go to the place where you publish your Power BI dashboard and grab the data source. Then you need to create a data set. Um, and the first thing it asks you is the data source, so you just click that one. And then we've got this query designer. So the idea here is you, you're meant to be able to drag and drop the columns that you might want to use. From your data source, so I have all these tables in my data source, and you're meant to be able to just drag and drop them. Um, this doesn't really work too well. It works okay if if the all the columns are in the same table, um, because then you can just drag and drop them all, and then you can put any filters in at the top here, and then you can choose to parameterize that filter if you want. But I find that this doesn't really work too well. So what I've been doing. And the reason it doesn't work is because this tool is not clever enough to realize the relationships that are going on between tables in the way that Power BI can. So as you can see in my Power BI model, I've got quite a complex data structure here where I'm linking a lot of tables together. And essentially what I want to be able to do in my report is filter by all these things at the top here. Which are things like region, org unit, and, and I think financial year over here which are all coming through linked through the deliverables, through the work items, and eventually then to the things like the state metrics. So there's kind of three tables that it goes through, to, through before it gets to state metrics, and um, before it gets to this state metrics table. So what I had to do was I had to basically recreate a table in Power BI just for this purpose, um, like this, which had all of the columns in it that I needed. So I made sure that all of these were set, set to don't summarize. So now I have two tables that are um, in, the, in the correct format and will be able to be filtered by or region, strategic pillar and the reported period. Great. So how do I export this table? Because I don't really want to publish this to my dashboard and I haven't created it as a proper uh, table in my query. It's just a, it's just a visual. So what you do is you go to view performance and analyzer and then you just do start recording and then you refresh the visuals. And what that does is it gives you all this um, DAX code basically. So if I want to get the DAX code that creates this deliverables table, and another important point is I've actually filtered this by the four things I'd like to filter my paginated report by here. Um, 
So it basically built the Pagenet report in, in Power BI, right? Let's grab the query, copy that, move to here, and stick it in here. And then you'll see what it's doing. So it's basically filtering it by financial year, organization unit, region, and strategic pillar. So that's great, that's exactly what I want to do. It's paginated report. But rather than have it hard coded in, I want to have it as a uh, parameter. So the way you do that, let me just close that for now, you can see that, is you load in um, a different data source for each of the parameters you want to filter by. And this is much easier. You just do add data set. Uh, you can actually use the query designer this time. You can pick whatever you want the filter to be. So I think one of them is region. Just drag it in there, stick it up there, make it a parameter, and start off with all of them enabled. You can pick from any of them. And then hit OK. What that will do, I want to save it, is it will stick it in as a parameter up here called region. So you'll have data source set region, you have parameter region. Double click on that one. You can say that you don't want to allow no values. I'm not going to allow multiple values in this case. And you can set a default value just right in the name of the region that you want uh, the first one to be. You will need to put a default value in, it can't be, can't be null. Um, so now you've done that, you want to use this in your uh, original query. So here's all the code that I copied from Power BI. And as you can see, I've got now, instead of the hard code, I've got at RP financial year, at RP org, at RP region. So that's all I've done to edit the code. Uh, and I've also added in, in the parameters section, I've made sure I've added in each of the parameters at the top there. Uh, and that's where I've called the friendly name of RP region, just within this report parameter. So RP is report parameter. And that's referring to the other parameters here. That's how you do it. Now it does say when you hit OK, it tends to say like uh, something along the lines of this code can't be edited now that you've hard coded it. And you just hit OK, that's fine. Um, you'll have these different uh, parameters at the top. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was um, set up the, uh, the drop down boxes to cascade so that when I select um, strategic pillar, it reduces the choices of filters I have for the region. So the way I did that was in the organizational unit table. Open that one up. You see here I've got it filtering by RP pillar, strategic pillar. And I just did that by loading in little table of organization unit versus strategic pillar. So now depending on what strategic pillar I pick, I'll have a different choices of organization unit. As you can see here. So that's it. Um, the other things to note are you need to get the page set up right. So you right click on here, and do report properties. And then here's where you basically get the width of the page and the height of the page. Done my landscape. So you need to remember 29.7 centimeters. Um, and then that's the width basically you need to make the, the body of the report. So you click on the body, you see it says 28.65. That's because I've got 0.5 of a centimeter margin either side, which you can actually see. You see it. 0.5.5. You can also use these expressions. So if I click these, you'll see that some of this text is dynamic. And you can just pick from a list of parameters basically to concatenate it all together. It's pretty easy. And the last thing I did was uh, some different colouring of the, the headers and the table columns based on the pillar selected up here. So to do that, you just in the background colour, you can do that as a 
expression. And I've just done a switch expression based on the strategic pillar value. It equals biosecurity put in the color code, etc. So quite easy. And then you just publish that Power BI. And it comes in uh, like this. It looks a bit funny first. So it's got, as you can see, it's not laid out properly on it's not it's got a lot of white space over here and it's got um, you know a gap here and things. It's because it's on the default view, you need to change it to the page view. And then you just need to make sure that your page settings are set up. So mine's A4 and it's landscape just like my patching report settings, and then it starts to look pretty good. Um, you probably always want to put the date that it was created at the bottom as well. Um, so to do that. It's just an expression. Um, this expression, and it's uh, that's your your date command there. So it's in the, the global uh, uh, constants, I think. Open field, sorry. That in there. Can't remember where I got it from, but that that's the thing every time. And then this is just a carries return. And then this is the, the normal uh, way to get the page numbers as well. Good luck.